Hi guys, I'm Christina Prenda and I'm your English teacher today. We'll have a grammar lesson and we're going to look at irregular past participles. Here you see the irregular past participles. All right. First, let's have a look at the objectives of our today's lesson. Objective number one, you will review past participle forms of irregular verbs, because I think you know many of them. You will analyze various modifications, actually modification patterns of irregular past participles. You will inspect irregular past participles in context and their particular use. And finally, you will use irregular past participles in sentences. Before we continue, let's have a look at the difference between regular and irregular verbs from which one of their forms are the past participle forms. Regular verbs, first of all. You see the base form, past simple form, past participle. There is something very obvious in this table. I hope you can see it. Now let's have a look at the irregular verbs, how they behave. The base form, or maybe it's better if you go horizontally. So the change in the regular verbs is like this. Ask, asked, asked, create, created, created. And here we have come, came, come, build, built, built, Drink, drank, drunk, let, 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 meet, met, met. And um, can you see any particular pattern repeating? If you need more time, you can stop the video and have a better look. This is what you were supposed to notice. So, as you see here, in the left table with the regular verbs. Suffix ed is used in regular verbs and the past simple form is exactly the same as the past participle form. But when we think about the regular verbs, the situation is completely different. You see the red letters show you where changes happen in some verbs, there are no changes at all in all the three forms. Read has been marked because although it is written the same way, the pronunciation is different. Read, read, read. So out of the context, you wouldn't know whether the verb is used in one of, or another form. So, there is no exact rule for irregular verbs. That is something that you will learn by practice. And we are not going to enumerate or call certain groups with a certain name. We're just going to have a look at different modification patterns so that you are aware there are really different patterns. I'm sure you're already aware of it, but still, let's have a second look. So this group that first appeared was one of those that don't change at all. Past symbol has been deleted so that you can only compare base form and uh, irregular past participle. So all of these, they are the same left and right side. So if you want to look more at these groups, you can stop the video, but now we are just going to have a quick walk through the park, <laughs> although it's not a walk in the park at all. This second group, B, B and these are, um, some of them are uh, auxiliary verbs, very often used, and although they are irregular participles, many of you, I believe, remember, because they are frequently used in speech and written English too. Be, being, do, done, go, gone, see, seen, come. You see, come, come, 
come stay the same come came come one of come and run uh, belong to the pattern that the first and the third poem are the same but in the middle in past simple there is a change and then have uh, turns into head let's see another pattern what do you see here you see that the verb is the same almost only the end has been changed d becomes t bend bent send sent etc etc the next one also has some common uh, has a common change can you say it can you explain it yourself we have double e in spelling and it's pronounced with long e sleep keep creep weep and then the double e turns into a single e and the final p turns into t so we instead of p we have pt so sleep slept keep kept creep crap etc etc the next one here in the blue box we have throw thrown grow grown blow blown so apart from fly all the rest have only n attached in the end fly is put in this group because uh, the past participle looks like the others in this pattern and then we have this ring rung sing sung sing uh, sung drink drunk etc etc where what happens here i turned into you and uh, it's pronounced ah here ring rung the next pattern will be the one that ends in O-U-G-H-T or A-U-G-H-T and they all rhyme although they rhyme, the participles rhyme but the base form doesn't rhyme because here throw, grow, blow, they rhyme, both sides rhyme in this group it doesn't happen so we have buy, fight, seek, thing, blah, blah and then we have pot, pot, sod, sod, blah, 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 blah if we go horizontally, buy, bought, fight, fought, seek, suck, think, suck. So if somebody wants to make a song of it, go ahead after the end of this class. In this pattern here, the verbs in the base form undergo a change in the middle, you know, the underlined parts, and also they end in en. So we have right written, chose, chosen. Choose, chosen, sorry, freeze, frozen, speak, spoken, break, broken, etc., etc. So they all end in N. The next pattern is where the long middle vowel E is, has turned into short one. Not actually, it's not the same vowel, it's... Uh, the spelling is different so instead of two vowels in the writing um to like double e e a we have only one in uh, only read is different and the rest go feed fed lead let breed bread and then read red this is why here in this box we put read because the pronunciation rhymes with the rest. Fed, led, bread, red. And we have another one, which is also in a, a thicker frame, like this one here, because we have somebody who does not completely belong to the group, but still has something in common with the, with the pattern in the group. So we have sell, sold, tell, told, and hold goes in the opposite direction instead of held hold we have hold in the base form and then held in the past participle form now after we saw the patterns of uh, changes let's see what are the particular use 
uses actually of irregular past part participles. There is one thing that you should bear in mind. The use of irregular past participle forms is exact, exactly the same as the use of regular past participle forms. But we're going to split them into groups so that because they're irregular, no rule, some students have troubles remembering the third form of the irregular verbs, the third form being the past participle. We broke them into four groups, but again, don't forget, remember this. Irregular past participles have the same uses as the regular past participles, only they look different. They don't follow the dress code. And the dress code is ed suffix for the regular verbs and uh, special styles for the irregular participles. So let's see what we have here. Use one with the verb have to form perfect tenses. And let's see the examples. David has grown so much since his last visit. Brian had left by the time Irene arrived. And I have forgotten a full stop here. You should have noticed that. And finally, we hope that by the end of the year, scientists will have found a vaccine and treatment for COVID-19. Now, you see, we have has grown, had left, will have found, which is present perfect, past perfect, future perfect. So, this is with have or perfect tenses. The second use is pretty close to the first one. You'll see why. In the third conditional, the impossible one, things that if they were different in the past, consequences would have been different. So, uh, it says, as it is in this description here, this conditional, the third one, relates to actions that someone would have done, but that is impossible to change because it happened in the past and you cannot go back in the past and change things. If the pandemic had not spread around the world, Alex, would have gone to Brazil. We have two irregular participles here. I wouldn't have known that Ben and Alice were twins if you hadn't told me. Another two participles. So what is the difference? This is so we could put this uh, use in, together with the first one, but I believed it would be easier for you if we split them a little so that you don't get, you know, overwhelmed with all these perfects because you know third conditional is made with have again like the perfect tenses and they have much in common the third use is for passive structures but here instead of combining the past participle with have having been putting have before the past participle here we use the verb be, be, and it decides whether the sentence will be in present um, or future uh, or past tense. So the examples are, as you see, the northeast of the country was struck by torrential rain last night. And the other one? A famous painting has been stolen from the Museum of Modern Art. So here, B shows that this verb structure is in past tense. And here, this is a present perfect passive, both with irregular past participles. And the fourth use is as adjectives. We have the examples. Please help me pick up the pieces of the broken vase or vase, somebody would prefer to say. So, broken vase. Here it is like an adjective describes what kind of uh, vase? The broken one. Ah, okay. Some people find spoken English easier than written English. Spoken English, written English. So, here the past participle takes the P 
place of the adjective modifier before the, the noun. And um, the last one, what it is a question actually. What drives human sorry, what drives humans to explore the unknown? The unknown. I think this sentence is very interesting. I don't know about you. You see, sometimes um, you know, when the adjective is uh, preceded by the definite article and there is no noun after it, it, it feels like a noun. But that is a horse of different color, so we'll talk about it another time. Now, we got to the spot where you are going to do some work now about uh, irregular past participles. What you see in this table here are 14 verbs in their base form, but they are all irregular verbs. And you have 14 sentences in which you are going to use the irregular past participle of this verbs here, but you will select the correct one, put it in the past participle form and uh, complete the sentences. So, please stop the video. Uh, if you are very sure of your English, you can do the exercise without writing, but I suggest that you take a piece of paper, at least write the first number, not first, but the order numbers of the sentences, and uh, write the correct irregular past participle for each sentence. If we have done that, we are going to check what you wrote and also after we check the, whether you use the correct irregular past participle of these verbs, we are going to uh, find how many of them were, let's say, in the use of perfect tense, how many were as adjectives, and the rest of the four groups that we, four uses that we spoke about. So the first one, do you prefer frozen pizza? So this is freeze frozen. Do you prefer frozen pizza from the market or homemade pizza? I would have slept till noon if you hadn't phoned. Maybe you prefer to have this without the yellow ring. The weatherman had told us it would be sunny, but it rained all day. Next one. The novel Robinson Crusoe was written by Daniel, Daniel Defoe. Fifty years ago, ordinary people didn't stress about forgotten passwords. So this is something that we all have experienced. That clock was made in Switzerland. This is a classical example. Made in. He has taught hundreds of students during his career. What is this sentence about? About some kind of teacher. Mr. Wilson has never let her daughter... Did I say Mr.? Sorry. Mrs. Wilson has never let her daughter have a boyfriend. Nine, have you already seen The Umbrella Academy? That is a TV show, a series. I, I'm sure some of you have seen it, and I believe many of you like them, all the episodes. Nine, my grandmother has lost her glasses again. Ten, where have we put the car keys? A very regular sentence you hear around the house, if your parents are English, of course. We have never sung in public before. She had worn that blue dress many times. Uh, I don't like it when people judge other people by their clothes and how many times they have worn something, but let's forg forgive them this time. And the last one. Broken promises may turn friends into enemies. So, if you had your sentences completed like this, then you use irregular past participle correctly. If you have done correctly at least 10, you're good. And now, 
why are there different colors in the ways that you were supposed to fill in in the gaps? Hmm? I'll count to three and you have to come up with the, the, the right answer. Frozen pizza, forgotten password, broken promises. Those are all which uses that as adjective. Hmm. Then we have had told, has thought, taught, has never let, have already seen, has lost, have we put, have never sung, had worn. Those are all perfect tenses. Irregular past participle used in perfect tenses. Then we have the red ones. Robinson Crusoe was written and the clock was made. That is which use of past participle. The passive, the passive structures with B in front of them. And we have only one example where we have the, the green one. I would have slept till noon if you hadn't phoned. I don't know if uh, the person who said this sentence said it with a happy tone or with a angry, an angry tone, uh, but it doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is to recognize that this is the third conditional use. So, I would, you see, one of these numbers in the order of the sentences has been bolded because I want to ask you to remember this sentence. Broken promises may turn friends into enemies. So try to keep your promises and keep your friends. And have a great day. Goodbye, students.